The Holy Tales. Hi, my name is Gumbo. I'm a bookworm. I love eating books. They are really tasty. I live here in this big library with my friends Gumbo and Freckles. But I get lost here all the time. Over there on the Bible is Holy. She is really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories. But she loves sleeping, so we have to wake her up. Tabby, Freckles, let's go wake up Holy. I'm in the mood for a story. Holy, 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 wake up. You're supposed to tell us another story from the Bible today. Ooh, yes, yes. Oh, I will. I have thought about just a story to tell you today. Oh, let's not waste any more time. Story, story, story. Hold your horses, Gumbo. One story coming right up. Paul had been trained in the art of tent making. Paul came from a town called Tarsus, which was well known for goats. Goat's hair would be used to make strong cloth and its hide to make leather goods. Now over time, the Jews, who were against Jesus and his teachings, were getting stronger and stronger. In Corinth, Paul had been living with a Jew called Aquila and his wife Priscilla. Both of them were tent makers, so Paul earned his stay by helping making tents with them. One day, some Jews got together and captured Paul. They took him to Gallio, the Roman administrator. They complained very angrily against Paul. One of the men said, This man dares to teach people to worship the Lord in a way that breaks the Jewish law. Galil was angry that the people were wasting his time by bringing such small issues to him. He did not care about the breaking of Jewish laws. The Jews were very angry that they beat up their leader for the failure of their plan to punish Paul. Paul realized that it was finally time to move somewhere else. So he left for Syria. His friends, Aquila and Priscilla, went with him to Ephesus, where they stayed with Paul for a few days. Their house became the new meeting place for all the Christians in Ephesus. I am glad that the Roman guy didn't do anything to Paul. I am glad too. Now it is time for the question. What was the name of the man and his wife with whom Paul lived? I remember one. The wife's name was Priscilla. Yes. And what about her husband's name? I know the answer. His name was Aquila. Oh, yes. I forgot. Sorry, Holy. Never mind, sweetheart. Hello, children. I see you are back again for another story. Of course, Holly. Please, please, please tell us another story from the Bible. Of course I will. There once lived a Jewish man called Saul. He was very angry with Jesus and his disciples for talking about God in a way that was different from the old Jewish customs. One day, Saul was traveling to Damascus and suddenly a bright light shone from the sky. It was Jesus who had come to speak to him. Saul trembled with fear. For three days he could not eat or drink. It was then that he realized the power of Jesus and his teachings. He got himself baptized and became a Christian and changed his name to Paul. Soon, Paul started preaching about Jesus. This caused great confusion in the Jewish society. This man who was against Jesus was now telling the people to follow the same Messiah. That was indeed very strange. However, Paul's power grew and many Jews converted to Christianity. When the chief priests of Jerusalem heard about this, they were very angry. They decided to take Paul to prison. 
they guarded the city gates so that he could not escape. One of the disciples overheard this plan of the priests. So with the help of the other followers, Paul was helped to climb over the city walls and then into a basket, which would be lowered to a safe place. Paul soon escaped to Jerusalem, where he was not safe either. The Christians over there were still afraid of him. So one of the disciples called Barnabas took Paul to Caesarea, from where Paul traveled back to his home in Tarsus. That was a little confusing. Saul turns Christian, becomes Paul, escapes, then finally goes home. Phew! Yes! Well, Freckles, I am glad you listened carefully, because I will ask a question now. What was the name of the town where Paul lived? I know this one. He lived in a town called Tarsus. Yes, that is correct, Gumbo. Now for today's story. A long time ago, Paul and Silas, his follower, went to Philippi. In Philippi, they helped many people and spread the words of Jesus there. Everything was fine till Paul cured a servant girl. The girl was raving mad and her master made money using her madness to tell fortunes. Once the girl was cured, her master was very angry. He took Paul and Silas to the court. The judges found both of them guilty. So Paul and Silas were put in jail and were chained to the wall. The guard was ordered to keep a watch on them. At night, Paul and Silas started singing praises to the Lord. As they were singing, suddenly the earth started to tremble. The entire jail shook and the chains fell off from all the prisoners and the prison gates opened. The guard was very scared. He knew that if the prisoners escaped, he would be punished. So he took his sword and rushed inside. Paul called out his name and said to him, Stop! Look, we are still here. The guard looked at them and fell at their feet. He asked them what he could do to repent his sins. Paul replied, Believe in Jesus and everything will be fine. That night, the guard took them to his house that they celebrated and his whole family was baptized in the name of Jesus. The next day, Paul and Silas were freed by the order of the court. Yay! I'm so glad Paul and Silas got out of jail. They were good people. So, Holy, what is the question that you have for us today? What was the name of the place where Paul and Silas went to spread their word? I know this one. They went to a place called Philippi. Yes, you are correct, Gumbo. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Long time ago, two of Jesus' disciples called Paul and Barnabas had become good friends. Together, they were teaching people about Jesus in the city of Antioch. It was the third largest city in the Roman Empire. One day, they both went to Asia Minor to preach about Jesus. After much praying, they set off for their journey. They reached a town called Lystra. People there believed in mythological gods of the Greeks. In Lystra, Paul and Barnabas visited many places to preach about Jesus. They came across a crippled beggar. They saw him listening to them, so they looked at him and said, Stand up. At once the man stood up and walked. The people gathered their thought that Paul and Barnabas were gods in human form. They called them Hermes and Zeus, the messengers of God. When the local priests heard this, they brought an ox decorated with flower garlands to offer as a sacrifice to the two men. Paul and Barnabas were horrified. Paul said, What are you doing? We are not gods. We are humans like you. We have come here to spread the good news of the one true God who has made the sunshine, the flowers, the trees, and everything that we see around us. Barnabas then requested them to give up worshipping idols and worship Jesus. 
Though that angered the people of Lystra, many among them turned to Christianity. I love that story, Holy. Oh, Freckles, I am glad you liked it. I love telling you children's stories. Now, my question is, what were the names of the two disciples of Jesus who preached their master's teachings? They were Paul and Barnabas. They were also very good friends, just like us. Absolutely, Tubby. Today I'm going to tell you the story about what happened to Paul when he went to preach in Thessalonica, Berea and Athens. Paul and Silas arrived in a town called Thessalonica and like always, Paul went to the synagogue to teach people about Jesus. He told the people that Jesus was the Messiah of God who they had been waiting for. He told them how Jesus died for them and was brought back to life. Many people there, both men and women, believed Paul's teaching and became followers of Jesus. This angered the Jewish leaders. They did not like the fact their people were becoming believers. So they got hold of a few men on the street and stirred them up against Paul. The mob was so angry that they wanted to hurt him. First, they attacked the house of Jason because they thought Paul and Silas were there. When they did not find them there, they dragged Jason out onto the street and brought him to the city council. Paul is turning our city upside down with his crazy teachings, they said. And this man lets them stay in his home. He is guilty of treason against Caesar because they are loyal to Jesus. The people in the city were confused by these accusations. Finally, they let Jason go after he paid a fine. The believers helped Paul and Silas to escape from the dangerous situation in Thessalonica. From Thessalonica, they went to a town called Berea and like always, went to a synagogue there. The people in Berea were much more open to Paul's teachings and they listened to him carefully. They read through the scriptures every day, making sure that he was teaching the right thing. Many Jews and important Greek women and men started believing in Jesus because of their teachings. But the religious leaders of Thessalonica heard what was happening, so they came to Berea to stir up more trouble. Seeing this, the believers of Berea sent Paul to Athens, while Timothy and Silas stayed back. When Paul arrived in Athens, he saw idols everywhere in the city, and this made him very sad. He went to the synagogue and spoke every day in the city's public square. He also debated some of the philosophers and told everyone about Jesus' resurrection. They thought he was a little crazy or that he was trying to push some strange religion. The philosophers took Paul to the council and was asked to explain everything about the religion which was strange for them. Paul stood up before the council and said, Men of Athens, I can see that you are all very religious with the altars and idols that I see around. There was one I saw which had an inscription on it saying, To an unknown God. But how are you worshipping this God without even knowing his name? Well, let me tell you about him. He is the God who created the world and everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth and he does not live in any man-made building. He gives life and breath to seek him and find him, which makes him live very close to us and not in any idol made by a stone carver or a metal worker. He has forgiven us about this in the past, but now he commands everyone to turn against idols and turn to him. He has set a day for judging the world by the man who he raised from the dead. Paul's teachings made some of the philosophers laugh, but there were people who wanted to hear more. Some of them even became believers as they understood what Paul was teaching about Jesus. 
So, did you enjoy the story? Oh, yes. It was wonderful. We loved it. Well, then let me ask all of you a question. Where did Paul and Silas go after escaping from Thessalonica? They went to a town called Berea. Well done! Now, long, long ago, Paul and his companion Silas left for their journey to Syria and Sicilia. After leaving Sicilia, Paul and Silas went to Derby and Lystra. There they met a young man called Timothy, who was a very good follower of Jesus' teachings. Timothy's father was Greek, but he became a believer of Jesus through his grandmother Lois and mother Eunice. They were both Jews who had converted into Christianity. When Paul first met Timothy, he immediately liked him. He put his hands over him and prayed so that the Holy Spirit would come and bless him. He knew that Timothy loved God and desired to live for him. Timothy was a young man who had surrendered his life to God and was willing to do whatever God wanted him to do. Over the next few years, Timothy became a constant companion of Paul and Silas. Paul was so fond of Timothy that he often called him his dear son. Paul, Silas and Timothy traveled all over Asia Minor, preaching about Jesus and gathering more followers along their way. One night, Paul had a vision that a Macedonian man had come to him asking for help. Paul thought to himself, The Lord must be giving me the message to go to Macedonia. Maybe I'm required there. I must go immediately. So Paul very soon took off for the port of Troas. That was a nice story. Someday, even I would like to travel all over the world on ships and planes and trains. Absolutely. Someday, I am sure you will. Now, my question is, which place did Paul leave for after he had his vision? He left for Pasadena. No, Sally, it was Macedonia. Macedonia is in Europe. It used to be a part of Greece and then Rome in ancient times. Wow! Very good, Tubby! To watch more videos, please subscribe. Well, Paul stayed in Athens for a long time and made many people the followers of Christ. After he left Athens, he went to a place called Corinth. Corinth was a very important city. Corinth was also the capital of the Roman province of Achaia and the home of the Roman administrator Gallio. Many Jewish families who had been exiled from Rome lived there. As soon as Silas and Timothy, two of Paul's companions, reached Corinth, Paul started teaching at the house of God with them. His teachings made some people gathered there very angry and they openly denied Paul's preaching. Paul just shook his head and told them that he had tried his best. However, there were many believers of Jesus in the city. Most of the people of Corinth were pleased to see them and treated them very well. Paul had even baptized the president of the house of God of Corinth and his entire family. One night, the Lord appeared in Paul's dream and said to him, Paul, oh, my child. Do not lose hope. I am with you. Do not let anyone stop you from speaking of me. No one will hurt you. So Paul decided to stay on in Corinth for the next 18 months. I also want to go to Athens and Corinth. We never go anywhere. I'm sure they have awesome food. Tubby, you and food. Hmm, I am sure that you will travel someday. Now, let's see if you have been listening to my story carefully. For how long did Paul stay in Corinth? He stayed there for 80 long months with his friends Timothy and Silas. Very good! Alright kids, so today's story is about Paul in Malta. After a storm, the ship Paul was on was shipwrecked close to an island. All the passengers of the wrecked ship reached the shore and made a huge bonfire. 
It was cold and rainy. Some local people who found them there helped them in finding wood and food. As Paul was putting some sticks of wood into the fire, a poisonous snake crawled onto his hand and bit him. The people were really worried because they expected Paul to fall down in pain. But nothing happened to Paul. He just shook off the snake and went on working as if nothing had happened. The people gathered thought that Paul was God dressed as a man. Soon Paul was invited to the house of the governor of the town. His name was Publius. And his father had been very ill with fever. Publius welcomed Paul and his two friends warmly into his house. Paul saw Publius's father and went to his room and sat down beside him. He prayed to the Lord and placed his hands on Publius's father. He was immediately healed. Publius thanked Paul for healing his father and the news of this miracle spread quickly in the whole island. People started going to Paul to get healed and hear him preach. Paul stayed in Malta for three months. At the end of his stay, as he got ready for his journey towards Rome, the people of Malta brought all the needed things on board and bid their final goodbyes. Paul sailed once more in an Alexandrian merchant ship. A snake beat him and nothing happened? Wow! I really like the story. I am glad you liked it. But you have to answer a question now. Who did Paul heal? An old man? Publius's father. Yay! I remembered. I was genius. Genius, huh? Now, now. So today's story is about how Paul spread the word of Jesus in Athens. Now Paul knew that his life was in danger from the Jews, so he escaped to Athens. As he roamed around the city, he saw many statues of mythical gods. This made him very angry. So he went to the house of God of Athens and discussed this with the people over there. Many of them simply laughed it off, but some really listened to him. So they invited Paul to talk to the council. In the council, Paul said, People of Athens, I am here to tell you about the Lord, who has made everything. This Lord has given us everything, even life itself. He is the creator of everything. Saying this, he paused and tried to read the faces of the people who were gathered there. They were listening to him very carefully. So he continued with his speech. He said that the Lord is the God of heavens, so he does not stay in temples. Also, that he gives his people everything without asking for anything in return. Paul mentioned in his speech to the people that he walked around the city and he saw the many gods that these people worship. Paul said, we are all his children, and it is not necessary that we make idols that supposedly look like him. The Lord loves us and sends his Son in human form to lead us to salvation. And when we began losing faith in him, he raised his Son to life from death. People started laughing. They could not believe in the God that Paul was talking about. Some, however, did believe and many of them became followers of Christ. So, now that I'm done telling my story, who wants to answer my question? I will, I will, please. Of course. So tell me, what did Paul see as he roamed around the city of Athens? Mm, he saw many, many statues of mythical gods. Absolutely, Gumbo. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Now listen. Now Paul and a few other prisoners were on their way to Rome. A centurion called Julius was in charge of them. Along with Paul, there were two other men. One was a man called Luke, who was a doctor. He had become one of the followers in Troas and later wrote all about Paul's travels. During their journey, they stopped at the port of Sidon. Then they sailed towards Cyprus. It took them two weeks to reach the port of Myra as the wind kept blowing against them. The captain had a cargo of grains which they were carrying to Italy. 
The wind forced them to change their route and go towards the island of Crete. They finally reached the Bay of Fair Heavens, which became their shelter from the bad weather for several days to come. Their journey had been long, and now it was late September. There was a discussion between Julius and the captain about whether they should head to the port of Phoenix or not. The port was further around the coast, and the journey could prove dangerous to the ship cargo and the lives of people on board. Paul warned them not to continue their journey. But in the end, it was decided that they would sail towards Phoenix. As they started their journey, a warm, southerly breeze came up, which gave them hope that things might turn out all right. They sailed closer to the shore. As they continued sailing, suddenly a hurricane swept upon them. The ship was tossed around by the winds. The grain got soaked in water, which proved to be another danger, as the wheat could swell up and burst the ship. Guide! Will poor Paul's troubles never stop, Holy? That was so scary. It was scary. But you know God always looks upon us even during the worst of times. Anyway, my question. What was the name of the doctor who made the journey with Paul and later wrote about Paul's travels? I know, I know. His name was Luke. Yes, that is right. All right, kids. In this story, Paul reaches Rome. After living in Malta for a couple of years, the apostle Paul and his friends sailed from Malta to Syracuse in Sicily and stayed there for three days. Then they sailed up the coast of Regium on the tip of Italy. The ship soon picked up a southerly wind and sailed to Puteoli where Paul and his friends stayed for a week. After leaving Puteoli, they went along the Appian Way to Rome. The news of Paul's arrival had reached the Christian community in Rome and they were gathered there to greet him with a warm welcome. In Rome, Paul was kept under house arrest for two years. But during that time, he met many visitors who came from far and near. He kept in touch with all the churches he had helped set up. He advised his many friends and wrote all about his journeys and long letters to different churches. Some of them have survived till now and can be seen in the New Testament. Wow! That sounded like a lesson on geography. I was totally confused with all those names. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I hope you learned something from it. I did. Now ask us the question. We want you to sing with us. All right. My question is, how many years was Paul under house arrest? One, two, two, two. Yes, yes, yes. You were right, Tubby. All those names of places confuse me. Today's story is, Paul gives hope. Now Paul was at sea. He was on his way to Rome. A storm had hit and the ship was in trouble. Everybody had lost hope. It had already been two weeks and they were still drifting. So Paul decided to talk to them. He said, I had warned you not to sail to Phoenix, but you did not listen to me. Now we are in this mess, but you must not lose hope. None of our lives are in danger. We might lose the ship, but none will die. Last night, I saw an angel in my dreams. It told me that I must not fear. All of us here are meant to be presented before Caesar, and because of this, God will keep us safe. This gave the men some hope. It was dark, so they kept checking the depth to prevent the ship from running into the ground. Some sailors were so scared that they tried to escape in a boat. Paul told Julius not to stop them, so he let them go. Soon dawn came, and Paul assured all the men that their survival was in no doubt. They were all hungry, so Paul took out a crust of bread from his bag. He thanked the Lord and told others to eat it as well. All 276 passengers and crew ate as much as they wanted from that piece of bread. 
the light was enough for them to see that they had drifted towards a rocky creek with a small beach where they could keep the ship. Wow! 236 people ate just from one crust of bread? That's so awesome! I know! Paul was truly blessed. Now, if you are ready, I will ask a question. What gave people on the ship hope? Paul! He told them that an angel told him that nothing bad would happen to them. Well done! Right answer! To watch more videos, please subscribe. Great! Let's begin then. Paul the Apostle had been sent to Rome to meet Caesar. He had been in Rome for only three days when he called all the senior Jews to where he was staying. He spoke to the group that had gathered. Friends, I have called you here to tell you why I am here. I have done nothing that is akin to Jewish religion, and yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed to the Romans to be killed. They themselves couldn't find any case against me, and they could not set me free. But because the Jewish people didn't agree, I was forced to appeal to Caesar. Right now, I want to make it clear to everyone that I am a prisoner for the wrong reasons. The people replied that since they had not got any letters from Judea, they would like to hear it personally from him about the path he followed, so they could decide for themselves whether he was right or wrong. So the next day they met again. This time, the people had increased in number. Paul began by telling them why he had chosen to follow Christianity. He told them all about Jesus. The elders discussed and argued about him all day. Finally, it was time to leave. Some believed Paul, but most still didn't. As they were leaving, Paul said to them, I only wish that you could understand. Then God will send his salvation to the pagans, and I'm sure they will accept it. Oh, I can't wait to hear what happens next. All in good time. For now, answer the question. What did the people want from Paul? Wait, I think I know. They wanted to hear everything from Paul himself and then decide whether he was right or wrong. Wow! What a smart girl! Well done! Paul once went to a small town called Troas and gathered as many followers as he could. After staying there for a few days, he decided to leave for Jerusalem as soon as possible. He did not want to go back to Ephesus, and so he arranged a meeting for all the elders of a church in a port called Mytilene. As his ship reached the port, he stepped down from the ship and addressed the people who had gathered there. He said in a serious voice, You all must have seen. I have worked to spread the good news of Jesus amongst the Jews and the Greeks. I wanted them to believe in Jesus in spite of all difficulty and problems they have caused me. Now as I leave, my spirit is like a prisoner. I do not know what fate awaits me, save for what the Holy Spirit has prepared me for. I know I have pain and imprisonment ahead of me, but I have no regrets. Paul further said to the people that he just hoped to continue doing all that Jesus had asked him to do. He also advised the people that since he would not be meeting them anymore, they should all be on their guard. They should not be stopped by anyone from believing or spreading the divine message of God. Once Paul finished speaking, all his followers knelt down and prayed to God. Many of them were crying because they were sad that Paul had to leave. All the people gathered there and bid him goodbye. Paul then got on the ship again to set sail for Jerusalem. Now let me see if you listen to the story carefully. Where did Paul decide not to go back after leaving Troas? He did not want to go back to Ephesus, so he went to Jerusalem. Excellent! I wouldn't have been able to answer that. One day, Gumbo! Today's story is about Paul getting arrested in Jerusalem. Paul bid goodbye to the believers in Ephesus and headed for Jerusalem. 
Some of Paul's friends begged him not to go there because Paul had received death threats from the Jewish leaders who were very angry with him. But Paul was ready to give his life for Jesus' sake. His friends were unable to convince him otherwise, so some of his friends went along with him. In Jerusalem, Paul met the leaders of the church and told them all about his experiences preaching in other cities and the number of people who were following Jesus now. The leaders praised God for all the work he had done, but then they said, we know that a lot of Jews now believe in Jesus because of your preaching. However, we take the law of Moses very seriously. The Christians of Jerusalem tell us that your preaching is trying to make people turn their backs to Moses' laws. So what should we do now? We have an idea. We have some men who are going to the temple to get their heads shaved and be part of the purification ceremony. Pay for them to have their heads shaved. Then everyone will know that the rumors are false and that you encourage people to obey the laws of Moses. Paul agreed to their plan and he went through the purification process the next day. But there were some Jews from Asia who saw him in the temple and immediately started a riot against him. They grabbed him and yelled at him, saying, This is the man who teaches people to go against Moses' laws. He even speaks against the temple. Gradually, the entire city joined in the riot against Paul. The people dragged him out of the temple, trying to kill him. But the Roman commander arrested Paul and put him in chains when he heard the news of the riot. He asked the people about Paul and what he had done. People were shouting out different things about him and the commander was confused. He had no clear idea as to what Paul might have done. The crowd pointed to Paul and continued shouting, Kill him! Kill him! Paul asked the commander if he would get permission to speak to the crowd. The commander let him. The crowd went quiet when they saw Paul come forward to speak. Paul said, I am a Jew and have learned the Jewish laws and customs. I have obeyed them and I am eager to honor God just as you are. There was a time when I persecuted the believers of Jesus. I even went to Damascus to stop them from preaching against Jesus. But Jesus himself spoke to me on that journey. I now know that he is the real Son of God. I was chosen by God to spread his message to the entire world. One day, I had a vision of God in the temple. He told me to leave Jerusalem because the people here would not believe my message. I argued with him, but he still told me to leave Jerusalem. He asked me to go far away and preach to the Gentiles. When the crowd heard Paul say the word Gentile, they went crazy and began shouting, Kill him! Kill him! The commander brought Paul inside and ordered that he be beaten. As the soldiers were beginning to beat him, Paul asked if it was legal to treat a Roman citizen in this way. You are a Roman citizen? The commander asked. Yes, I am. I am a citizen by birth. Paul said. So they untied him and did not beat him. That was a really enjoyable story, Holy. Yes, it was. So what's the question for today? Today's question is, Where did Jesus appear to Paul on his journey? I know! When Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute the believers. Wonderful, Freckles! To watch more videos, please subscribe. When Paul was arrested by the Roman commander in Jerusalem, Paul did not waste any time. 
His goal of preaching and spreading God's kingdom was always the first thing on his mind. Even in prison, he stayed focused on his goal. He wrote letters to the churches he visited and also to those he had only heard about, just to encourage the believers in their faith. Many of the New Testament books are actually letters from Paul. Romans were writing to the church in Rome to share the good news of Jesus. The two Corinthians were written to the church in Corinth, giving guidelines on how to live as believers. The two letters to Timothy and one to Titus are also books of the New Testament. Paul was eager for believers to be strong in their faith and in their obedience to God. That was a short and sweet story. Loved it. I am glad, Gumbo. So now, time for the question. To whom were the two Corinthians written? I know. They were written to a church in Corinth. Excellent, Tubby. Well done. Long ago, Paul was kept as a prisoner in Caesarea for two years by the Roman governor Felix, who was not very honest. During this time, Paul's friends were allowed to visit him, so he got whatever he needed. Felix would call Paul to court many times to hear what Paul had to say. But the truth was that Felix had been hoping that Paul would bribe him for freedom. However, this did not happen. Felix's place was soon taken by another new governor called Festus. Festus wanted to maintain peace and friendship with the Jews, so he kept Paul a prisoner. The chief priests were called from Jerusalem to state their case against Paul. Although the priests blamed him for many things, they did not have the evidence needed to prove the charges against Paul. To protect himself, Paul said that he did not commit any offense against the Jewish law, the temple, or even Caesar. Being a Roman citizen, Paul had some advantages. He could plead his innocence to Caesar himself. So when the governor asked him, Paul, if you're innocent as you claim, can you face these charges before me in Jerusalem? Paul said, Since I have not done anything wrong, therefore being a part of Rome, I would like to appeal to Caesar. Festus discussed this with his advisors and they agreed to send Paul to appeal to Caesar himself. Did you kids enjoy the story? Yes, we did. Paul was a good man, wasn't he, Holy? Deep down, everyone is good, Preckles, dear. Now for my question. Who became the governor of Rome after Felix? Sis! No, no, silly Festus! I was going to say that and you are silly. Right you are, Tubby. So, today's story is about how Paul was saved. Long time ago, Paul was sent to prison by the Jews, who were strict followers of the law of Moses, for spreading the words and teachings of Jesus. During his night in prison, the Lord came to him and told him not to be afraid. The Lord told him that he had spoken for him in Jerusalem, and now he had to do the same in Rome. Meanwhile, the Jews were getting impatient and wanted to kill Paul. They promised not to eat or drink till the time Paul was dead. The next day, they all went to their leader to tell him about their plan. They had decided that they would send a message to the commander of the jail that the Jewish leaders had called Paul to ask more questions. While Paul would be on his way, a group of Jews would attack Paul and kill him. As they were discussing their plan, they were overheard by a little boy. He was the son of Paul's sister. He went running to the commander of the jail and told him everything. The commander was a nice man and he assured the boy that his uncle would be safe. The commander sent a letter to the governor of Caesarea about Paul and the conspiracy against him. That night, Paul was taken to Caesarea, escorted by hundred soldiers. This is how the Lord saved Paul. Now, Gumbo, answer my question. 
Where was Paul sent to in order to protect him from being killed? I know the answer. He was sent to Caesarea with hundred soldiers. Excellent, Gumbo. See, I told you, you just need to pay a little bit more attention. Now, I will tell you the story. The story is about Paul and King Agrippa. Long time ago, the King Herod Agrippa was visiting Caesarea with his mother Bernice. He was told all about Paul and decided to meet Paul himself. Hence, Paul was called before the king and asked to present his case to him. Paul said that he was extremely honored that King Agrippa had decided to meet him. He started by saying that King Agrippa was a good judge of what is fair in Jewish matters. He then started telling his story, starting from his early life when he first became a Christian and everything that happened with him. He also told King Agrippa all about Jesus. Festus, the Roman governor, was getting angrier by the minute. Stop at once. What are you saying? The man is clearly lying. Paul said calmly that he never lied and that he knew King Agrippa believed him. King Agrippa said, The man is innocent. We could have freed him. But since he has appealed to Caesar, then it is to him he shall go. Wow, this is getting really interesting. Wonder what happens next? Haha, <laughs> all in good time. I am glad you liked the story. I did. We all did. Now ask us the question. Okay. Who did King Herod Agrippa visit Caesarea with? With his mother. Her name was Bernice. Yes, both of you are right. Well done. Thanks, Oli. You can sleep now. We will see you soon. Tales. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the home.